It's the time for whore. Package from China. Oh, hey guys, welcome back to the channel because we're going to take a close look at the Extreme Mini Game Box Classic Games TF support. Man, this name makes me really exciting and such a curious one. More like, what am I going to get today? Are we going to get 8 bit? Oh boy, we're going to get some 8 bit footage again. Yep. But the question is, what kind of, let's say, software is it running on? Because I have reviewed a lot of these plug and play devices and there are actually some good ones. But let's take a close look inside the box. Okay, so this is what we're going to get. Let's talk about the toilet paper manual. This deluxe version, like this glossy paper they're using. So the original model is the FY600-28. That is the original one. Mini U Game Box Anniversary Edition. Ooh, okay, sounds exciting. Let's take a closer what we're going to get inside. So, uh -huh. connected power cable, U Box plug-in TV, 5 volt, 5 hall milliamp Android charge connect by the U Box. That makes no sense whatsoever. Nevertheless, there's some basic explanation how it works and how do we reset it. See, the most important thing is just leaving it out. Useless. We're going to get the cable, the micro USB cable, and the reason why is very simple because these things need some extra juice because it's not going to get the juice from the HDMI, of course. So, whoa. Hmm, I must say the stick itself, I'm curious if this is going to be usable in my monitor. And the main problem with these sticks are that they are just too thick and we can't stick it in. That's the main problem. And the form factor is quite interesting. It is not like your typical Android box. Here we're having the micro USB connection that we're going to use. And they are also stating that we can add some games to this SD card. Let's see how big it is. Oh, there's one on 28 MB. Yeah, seriously, MB, no gigabyte. Holy crap, that is small. Okay, the controls. Hmm. Okay, the indication is over here on the sticker. that says number one, number two. They feel quite heavy. Oh, probably buttons. Let's smell it. Oh man, they smell good. Nevertheless, we have the AB, the position of the buttons. I don't even know what to think of it, but the position is a little bit weird. I want more like put them over there. Same with the D pad. Well, whatever. So they are working with two. Hey, they included some freaking batteries. See, that makes my day. Did it leak or something? No. Okay, no, pretty cool. Let's go and let's plug it in. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is plug in the USB cable for the juice. That is more convenient. So, what we're going to try out is start to fit it in because some of these sticks are too thick and I can't get it in. Mm, it's not going going in all the way, so that is not that is not good. That is not good. Sometimes it does work, but when you wiggle it around, the signal will fall away. But we'll see what happens. So, let's plug it in. Okay. So far, so good. Let's boot down the system by pressing on the on switch of the monitor. And let it go. Yeah, here he is, our famous menu. This is a menu that I've seen so many times nowadays, especially when it comes to the NES clones. Yeah, because they use this option menu a lot of different ways. Most of the time, they were more like similar to each other. And they're using a lot of different decals. The naughty boys. Okay, so we're having here action, shoot, sport, puzzle, racing, fighting game. I will do a quick overview of some of these lists, but not the full game list. Otherwise, this video will be 20 minutes long. Okay, so let's take a close look at it. Huh. Okay, so this is the first time that I had a plug and play device without any background music. Okay, so we're having here like the list of all kind of games. The controller is very responsive, even when I'm not putting it in front of the television. I did notice with some of these controllers with the cheap ones. Okay, let's go back. Oh, that was powering on. No, let's go back. But I did manage to find out how to get back out of the game. With this version, you just need to press select and start, but you need to hold it for five seconds or so. It's a very long time. But okay, let's go to the shoot game list. The same stuff like always. A Contra, seems to be one a kind of a game called Wolverine, Robocop, Smash TV. Hm, quite interesting. B and uh, let's try the sport games. Yep, hot blood, all the same stuff I've ever seen before. Okay, so let's try the fighting games. Let me guess, there was somewhere a Mortal Kombat homebrew game. That's one of these games they also put on it. No, there's no Mortal Kombat this time. Racing games. RC Pro AM. 
Oh, okay, and here we're having the puzzle games. But it's more like they're always slapping the, all the other games in the last list, like 375 games. Oh, it's always the same story with those guys. But nevertheless, there are a lot of different ones on. So let's check out who are they running and how are they sounding. So by the way, no quick load, quick save and no aspect ratio chains. But I did notice also with this version that we're going to get a, a weird kind of filter over it to look at more fancy. But there's no way to get a real 8-bit look-alike. And these are the games also on the system, like Sonic the Hedgehog, the homebrew game. Point! Oh man, this D-pad is super sensitive. Run for it! Run! Oh crap! Oh, no, I can't just say the D-pad is freaking awful. I love the turbo button. <laughs> dance, baby, dance. <laughs> okay, so let's try the second controller. So one player, two controllers. Yeah, let's go. Even for an 8-bit version, it sounds quite good. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Bingo! I'm missing the I'm missing the announcer. But the the positive thing about the really sensitive D-pad is that with games like this it works very well. So here we are with the extreme USB, HDMI, dongle, plug and play, whatever. It's more like, I always want to say more like the ultimate of extreme shitty device. It's not really that bad, but then overall it was more like, I was quite disappointed seeing that we're having a new year, another batch of these plug and play devices. And there is not, let's say, a big enough improvement. It's just the old stuff, like the NES clone, slapped in a stick, and yeah, with some controllers. And overall, the controller's not super bad. I don't was a big fan of the D-pad. Uh, connectivity was okay. It's working on 2.4 gigahertz, so you have some good connectivity from a couple of meters distance. But overall, it's a that's a big problem. If your controls get broken, there is no way of getting a replacement. It's more like you're done. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. I want to thank you for watching again. I know I already said it. Hit the little bell and let's go with the show. And I'll see you in the next video.